hope you all guys have learned shall i go ahead sir hmm shall i go ahead sir yeah yeah go ahead yeah um, basically in week one uh, sir uh, sir had explained some basic uh, like basic commands in dash Mm -hmm. First lecture is all about how to set up the VM, and from the second lecture on this, he just explained some basic commands in the back, dash. Mm -hmm. So some basic commands like uh, pwd, ls, ps, uh, unm, clear com, and mm -hmm. uh, options of the ls. He gone through the options of the ls, and and then how to navigate through the file system using cd command, mm -hmm. dot command, and double dot command, and. Uh, Mm, so what is dot and double dot so essentially in the first week what we have learned is uh, first of all how to get started with linux operating system right that's where you learned about vmware and everything yes, then sir. the second part was you know to learn more about the file system right uh, the way uh, it is what, the linux manages the files in its system the permissions and everything right those were essentially the contents of the week one and then you guys also learned some of the very useful commands like you know how to navigate in a command line in a program, right so how to move in a directory how to move out of a directory uh, uh significance of what dot is or double dot is or uh, the concepts which are of you know uh, i nodes right so how usually the file system works and then we'll also looked at uh, different folders uh, like the hierarchy of folders right which uh, linux operating system follows and we looked at the key differences how it is different than the windows operating system right then we also learned that all the files resides in home directory right and each user will have its home directory and the uh, roots home directory usually lies in the uh, root directory itself right and then what about uh, uh, the then we also i think learned uh, about uh, the The relative path and absolute path, the concepts, uh, as yes, right? And then uh, we looked at uh, how to identify different type of files, right? uh, how to modify uh, permissions, right? File permission, and how this uh, Linux system came to be is what we briefly also looked at uh, during our live sessions. Apart from that, what else we have covered uh, in the week one? Uh, we just, uh, I mean, sir, gone through what. What does uh, a line in the output of ls minus l mean? Mm. So the way usually a basic command usually works in a command line interface, right? That is what you learned. So you learned that there is something uh, called a command, right? Which can be invoked by using that keyword. In this particular case, what Subhash has mentioned is uh, you have ls as a command, right? So ls is a command which can be invoked. And it can be invoked with different flags, right? Which is what hyphen l essentially means. When you invoke the command ls with a flag hyphen l, essentially it will do long listing of the uh, contents of that particular folder. So, in a similar sense, all of these different commands which you are learning in this particular course will have these flags. And we also looked at how to look for what each of these flags means, right? Or what exactly the uh, command does so can you guys uh, list out all of the or uh, different uh, help command right which you have learned in the uh, first week <clears throat> anyone sumit mutukrishnan akash uh, yeah go ahead yes sir uh, which help command sir i mean so say uh, I came across this new command, right? I want to know everything there is. So there are a set of commands which you can use to probe a particular command, right? To know more about it. So which all commands were covered? Man. Man. Mm -hmm. Man. Uh, what uh, is? Then? I propose. Yes, then? TLDR. Then? And uh, putting hyphen hyphen help after the command name. Right. Okay. So. Info. Yeah, so let's go one by one, right? What does man gives you? It gives a very man long does. manual piece. Right, uh, it's a manual built by the developer himself, right? Whenever he is developing this command, he would like to inform you what and how 
uh, the command can be used. So manual pages will have that. Then apart from that, which other commands were there? I propose. Sir. So what I propose does? It uh, gives all the commands with that particular keyword. This shows, shows all the commands. Uh, so if you use a propose, uh, which is equivalent to which man command which we looked at. Yes. Man hyphen K was equivalent to what I proposed, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, what about this TLDR and uh, the help help command? Both of them gives a short and uh, sweet manual about that command. Right. And then you also know that uh, what do you call it? Uh, when you're looking for help, right, in a particular context, you will have multiple pages of man page also, right? So the helpful man page, uh, what do you call it? The man man will give you, you know, how to look at all those different pages um, and get the exact relevant information. You also learned about something called shell bulletin, right? And the commands. So shell bulletins are a little different than the commands. How? Anyone? Uh, if we need to know about that, we shouldn't use man. Yes. So basically, there are some set of command which comes with the OS itself, right? The kernel. So these commands yes. usually not have man page. Instead, you will have to use help, right? To get more information yes, about this command. Can you give me example of one such um, command? Grip. Grip has a manual page, right? Oh, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, well, uh, from I fifth want... week, hmm? uh, declare from fifth week. Yeah. So what I want you guys to do, you know, just quickly go into your command line, right? And look at some of the basic command. Does it have a man page? Let's, for example, CD. Does CD have a man page? LS has a man page? No, sir. CD doesn't have a man page. LS has a man page. What about MKDIR? Uh, yes, sir. MKDIR has the man page. What about MV? CP? Uh, even MV has the man page. Hmm. Eco? Eco. Yes, sir, Unico has the man base. So there are some set of uh, commands which will come built in, right? For that, you won't have a manual page. You have to use help. And then there are some commands which uh, you can simply use man page. Right? Uh, during this uh, discussions which we had, uh, we realized that man page sometimes may not be sufficient. So it is always good to have a, you know, you refer always to a book or maybe Google pages, which will give you more in-depth information of different use cases of a command, right? That will grasp it faster, OK? So uh, what about second week? What all key concepts which we learned in the second week? Uh, in second week, uh, they just explained about few editors, command line editors. Hmm. And? And networking. Anything else we covered? During second week. <clears throat> okay, so why do you why do you think like you know we needed to start with command line editors? Right. We in the first week we learned, you know, how to you know look at different directory structures, understand what the file system is, right? What file hi hierarchy a system has. Now, if you want to create a file, there are various ways you go by, right? One of the other command which you can use to create a file, can you name one? Instead of using command line, it, cat. It does. yes, cat command can be used, right? You can also do echo with redirections, right? To put anything yes, into a file, right? That is also another way. So, but it is not convenient if you are going to write a code like that, right? So, basically, uh, the next important factor you needed to learn was how to create a file using a command line editors, how to use command line editors, right? So, we looked at VI, we looked at Emacs. There is Nano and other uh, editors also as well, right? Yes. So the basic idea was you need to write your script, right? For shell scripting, you need to understand how uh, a command line editor works. So, but before we even we go, right? We had a very important question which was asked during the week one itself, right? What is a shell script? 
right by now i think you must uh, have understood what a shell script is right can anyone tell me what a shell script is Mm. Sahil? Sir, uh, is it yeah. a line of commands? Right. It's a set of commands which you want uh, to be executed automatically, basically. Right. So yes, instead of typing into a command line interface, you type it in, uh, you type it out in a file and then execute that file. Right. So how do you go and execute a file? Uh, by mm, dot slash. Dot slash. Uh, that file name. Yeah. And before that, we have to do what? Change its permissions, right? To give a user the permission to execute a file. Right? By default, it may not be given to you. So when you create a script, you need to modify the permission in such a way that you are able to execute it. That's what we learned. And then we also looked at the process control, right? Little bit in that week. in week two or was it just um, the no i think that so what else you learned apart from command line editors in yes sir, networking networking and ssh networking right networking and ssh and that really came handy when we were started uh, you know we just wanted to get into the course vm and we wanted to start working in there and you know start doing our uh, weekly practice assignments. So that is how we started uh, uh, with the networking as well, right? So we learned uh, while everyone here tried to log in into the system, we all use the SSH command, right? So can anyone tell me the full form of SSH? <coughs> you have secure used the command. Yeah. So secure shell, right? So it is. it gives you a remote access, right? Kind of. And you are able to run the commands on a remote machine from your own system, right? So when you do SSH, you are not essentially using the uh, resources of your home system to run the command, but it is the resources of the remote system which you can learn from. It. Apart from that, uh, in the lectures also, I think uh, Professor taught about SFTP, right, or SCP. So, which are your secure file transfer protocol. So, say, for example, if you want to download a file or upload a file to your uh, uh, remote server, right? How will you do that? So, that is what essentially that covered. Uh, so, maybe I think in the lab three, right, we'll have more uh, of the exercises where we are actually downloading and uploading files from your uh, remote server right and we'll take a look at those also as a practice example what else we learned in the networking the basic networking types of definitions ports. right types of Sorry? ports uh, types of all ports ip addresses mm. yes so those are essential things you may want to know and read more about it in depth if you are going to work with uh, devices such as your raspberry pi or other small devices where you want to program those devices for a specific purpose uh, apart from that i think that is all there was in the week two, right yes sir yeah what about week three uh sir yeah uh, sir uh, why are we not using any gui editor so in in most of the scenarios okay uh, a remote system will not provide you a gui interface Okay. That is one yeah. thing. The other thing is that sometimes you have way too many files to work with. Using GUI manually would take a lot of time. So in such a scenario, knowing how to use the command line editors and its functions, right? Um, uh, some of the commands would really help you to do processing at a very fast speed of a tremendous amount of data. And you can automate things basically. With GUI, you cannot automate things, right? Uh, yes, sir. sir. We can also say yeah. that uh, it, it, um, command line editors, editors are like uh, more functional than GUI editors. They are because uh, they allow you to do a lot of configuration. It's like, you know, uh, once you know them in and out, uh, you can use them as a daily driver for your you know, development task. 
uh, even you know this command line editors with some functionalities you can use them as a file explorer too. so you need not go out of your command line editor at all to do most of the tasks which is not true in case of uh, your gui right where you have to interact with the interface to get certain things done right yes sir good one shubhash so anyone else wants to add what else we learned in week 2 and i think you have out till week 2 firewall is next sir yes so firewall is something professor has only touched upon little bit right it yes. doesn't well deeper into it yeah. so i think you guys will have a separate networking course uh, which will deal with networking in depth uh, we are also trying to get uh, you know, uh, for your advanced lab right someone who can demonstrate you uh, how to get uh, this networking set up properly uh, on your devices okay so apart from that in week 3 what all you guys learned combining files and commands right so it's a natural progression right first we learn we learn little bit about file file systems and everything then we learned about how to write scripts into a uh, command line you know uh, editors and then we learn little bit of networking so that you can get into the system right the remote uh, lab system and then uh, next thing you wanted to learn was you know using just one command is not the goal of shell scripting you may be combining multiple commands together to achieve a particular goal that was the intent when the unix system was developed for the first time right they had very limited resources and they wanted to have small programs will do one thing and one thing perfectly so if you join such multiple programs together you may get the functionality of a big huge program which you may write otherwise in c c++ or python so that was the intent behind it so as we progress we'll see that you know uh, how this uh, combining and redirection falls into a lot of shell scripting procedures right so uh, what all you can do with redirections can anyone wants to summarize this whatever you have learned in uh, we can send the output of a certain command into your file right yeah and and we can also like uh, send the error messages uh, basically we sar explained about standard input and standard output mm -hmm. yeah, and so standard... basically uh, the way the command line interface was developed right say you have a command which is taking from a standard input or maybe from a file it will read to it will process and it will give you a standard output so on that standard output it can process further so which is why uh, something called pipe was introduced right what pipe usually does is that an output of one command is stored in a memory buffer which is then fed as a standard input to the next file next command after the pipe so that way you can process the it becomes a set of series of operations which you can do where you feed some raw data and get some refined report at the end of your whole process or you can also use it to assess whether you know in your script you have an error or not right uh, say your script didn't give you a proper output and instead it threw an error so you also want to capture that in sometimes where you want to maybe debug it right yes. for that for that purpose we also learned you know a command like t right which is very useful in such a scenario where you are piping way too many commands one after another that is another it will become very handy uh, apart from that also i think in uh, in the same week uh, the filtering operations right so like using sort unique uh, cut command all these commands uh, becomes a a staple part of it so as and when you get time explore the command right try to use uh, look for all the use cases for each of this command and practice it Uh, in that sense, so that when you actually start building scripts for your own purpose, right, you will get a better idea on to how to use them properly. Apart from uh, piping and redirection, what else was covered? Software management and process management. Process management. So 
in the process management from a ES perspective, right? It is very important that you learn how to um, what interrupt a process, right? You uh, the kill command. Uh, first of all, you need to know how to list out all the processes there are, right? Say you also want to know which was the first command which was ran when the Linux started. You can use a PSPS tree like command to explore that, or you may want to know which all processes are eating up resources, just like we have in Windows, right? In Windows, what option is there to look at task all the processes? Task, task manager. manager, right? In Task Manager, you'll get to see all the processes, right, which are running. And if you want to uh, end a process, what you simply do is, you know, you just click on it and you uh what do you call it? right click on it and you tell what signal you want to tell it right send it so you may want to kill or you want to end task or you want to interrupt it or you may want to pause it right all of that you can do it just by using kill command with different options that's what you learned in the uh, process control and we learned the sleep command which is you know which is used rigorously to test out uh, different process control you would like to do right the sleep command essentially asks the process to do what yes. do nothing for that duration right yes so say you are using a very exhaustive you have a very exhaustive code which is putting a lot of pressure on your cpu right it, it heats up it throttles so at such a point of time when you want to take a break in your code right you may have sleep process embedded there in, su in such a way that if certain aspects of the processor goes like this sleep for you know maybe 10 seconds then start again something like that uh, can also be a use case of sleep command so you can look at different use cases of sleep command they are very very interesting to look at apart from that i think you guys also learned the software control right so which uh, out. yeah yeah Sir, uh, professor had used coproc. I mean, to send the C command to background. Mm. Can we use coproc uh, for other commands as well, sir? You try it. Coproc sir, is as, uh, uh, what is the equivalent of coproc? Uh, uh, ampersand symbol at the end. Right. Uh, so what it does essentially? It can just you just pull up the, the uh, coproc? What do you call it? Man page. What does it does? What does it do? Uh, it says that it is a co process. I mean, it will send it into background. Mm. And task. what does ampersand does? It is also sending it into background. What is the difference between the two then? Hello? I don't know, sir. <laughs> So basically, ampersand just sends the process to the background, but Kuropok is even more powerful than that. Okay, so you have used multiple commands to be sent in the background. It will be stored. Their name will be stored as an array. So this is a little bit advanced, but uh, if you guys want to try it, right? Try different use cases of Kuropok command. It will give you a very good uh, explanation of uh, what all that can do. But for now, I think using just ampersand is fine. Okay, just to send the process to background. We can always use Copro. There is no issue. Uh, sir, actually, like uh, I have came across one case. Good evening, sir. Yeah. Good evening. Actually. Yeah. Go ahead, sir. Uh, actually, I tried installing some software uh, from Snap, uh, and when mm -hmm. I'm installing, I have observed that it's taking too much time, so that I just uh, terminated the process and used the Copro in front of it. But. Mm. Uh, Actually, it it haven't even started installation then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, did you read, you know, how to do the coproc with the installation process? No, sir. I thought it would be same. There is also something called uh, multi-core processing. Okay. Say you are installing a process. Uh, you are compiling a code or you may be installing some packages and you want to use multiple processors instead of one processor. Say your OS is using only one processor, which is you know blogging it down. There is also ways to use the number of processors also in Linux. So you just need to look through it; you will get it. But I think I feel that for this class, right, it is a little bit advanced uh, to do that kind of management. But it is very pretty simple. It's just syntax. Say you just want to use four cores instead of one. You just do NT four. 
in some of the cases. In some of the cases, the option may vary depending upon which command you are using. So you need to look at the package manager, like whichever package manager you're using, right, for installation purpose. Also, I think, why have you tried it just by using AND command? Oh, no, sir, I haven't tried with AND command. And Try with that. <laughs> the software exactly. package I used was Snap. Mm -hmm. Snap, you're using uh, which one? Arch Linux? Oh, no, sir, it's uh, Ubuntu, but uh, I wanted to. You're using Snap package managers. Okay. I mean, I want, to download something from, I want to download something from App Store so that I just use the Snap. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but uh, in course, I think the only DPKG is covered, is it? Yes, sir. Or uh, the APT is also covered. Uh, APT a little bit, I think. Uh, not a little bit, that's all. Because in Ubuntu, most of the installations is done through APT. Yeah. If not, you can always do it. Yeah, and apart from that, which like you guys must have also tinkered uh, other package managers, like what he has done, right? With Snap, what other package managers have you seen? Uh, have you even seen M, sir? M and DNF. Mm -hmm. DNF is in your uh, Fedora, 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 right? Yeah. M is also the the it is the older version. Yes, sir. Apps. So those are RPMs, right? Have you, anyone tried to look at why they are so different? The... Their origin is different. Right, the way it is, it will be, what compiled will be different, right? And say, if you want to compile a package, have you guys tried using make command to compile a package? You know, some of the scientific packages which we get, right? For example, for electronics people, there are so many open source chip design softwares, right? Uh, so you need to compile those packages, not install. So compiling needs you to use make utility, C make or make. There also you will learn a bit more. Like you try to install any one of such packages, right? You will learn more about it, how it works actually. Uh, you can always try all of these things in your uh, virtual box, okay, so that your main system doesn't get affected. So so the electronics how... kit that we that we are making use of, um, mm -hmm. small hardware kit, as mm -hmm. comes with the uh, means uh, with a software, open source software, or mm -hmm. using that kit. So, so how do you install it? So you just use using... uh, the APT. Uh, yeah, that's the default thing that is suggested online, but that didn't work for me. So I tried doing it using make command in mm. downloading the libraries and mm. compiling. It's very complicated, right? It's fairly complicated. Uh, yeah. Or was it easy? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Not at all. So I'm still stuck. I am unable to uh, make sense of the error message that I am receiving. Uh, <laughs> while compiling the, the the files so it's not so where is it logging all of the uh, error messages and where do you look oh, stack overflow is where you go you can look for the um, errors only on stack overflow um i tried going through the uh, error messages which are printed on the console while mm -hmm. while it is trying to compile the files and then I try to trace back which file it is uh, having problem with. So, but yeah, yeah most of the time it will be issue with its dependencies. But once you are very comfortable yeah. into you know how it actually plays in the background, right? Then it takes some time. It is not something you will. Just give me a minute, okay? Hello? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you will learn a lot uh, from just using those. Uh, I think um, Professor is in the process of making a special make-up videos for you. So we are yet to get uh, the details on it. 
once we get it, I think a lot of things will become clearer for you also as to how it is being used and how it is calling and how it is compiling all of the processes. Did you get all your dependencies resolved before you started? No, it's not actually means I have not done this kind of compilation earlier. Okay. So when I started doing it, I slowly started uh, uh, exploring more about the dependencies, which dependencies okay. it is asking for. And then um, I'm not yet sure uh, which dependency uh, is, is still missing or is it actually a problem with dependency or some means I'm having a code which is not of the right version. So yeah, version issue is usually only with the dependent, which is why the snap package, what he talked about, right? It, it takes a different approach over packaging. Those are, you know, little advanced level stuff, but basically you can actually look at how these package managers usually differ from each other. Some of them have all of the dependencies ported like a container. So everything runs in precisely how it should be given all of the dependencies are uh, okay. Some of the time, like, you know, when you're trying to install or uh, compile a package, you may need to downgrade some of the software which are there. But then that will break dependency for some other software. That is what the trick is when, when it comes to Linux operating system, right? You need to manage environments, manage the... Which is why this course is important. This is just a stepping stone. Not necessarily you will learn everything, but you will learn most of the basic commands or basic aspects of a shell scripting. If you look at the make command also right now the make file yeah it's make file you will get a lot of lot more information as to how it is doing okay. that was week three right so week three was only about that or i am i missing we something? have not i don't think we have talked about make command in any of the lectures uh, no no so no far. make will come eventually not uh, because we feel okay. that uh if you are writing C codes, right, for your hardware, eventually you will need to learn how to compile them, which is where your uh, make it becomes in, in the picture. So, so you were like, talking about package managers where we, when we have covered yes, that. Yes, right now this is just package managers. We are not even entering into a make it where uh, we are compiling the source code, the complete source code of the package. So, like, you, you must have learned how to write simple C code, right? You can also yeah. uh, write a make file for these C codes to compile them. So that is, yeah, Shubha. Uh, basically, uh, when I try to install something, I'm getting some .deb files. Mm. So even for installing them, we should we use make file, make for command? No, no, no. See, de .deb is your Debian file, right? So it is Debian package manager. and. Uh, just by using your apt package local install with local install you should be able to do it yes, sir. okay That's so that is pretty straightforward yeah uh, the make uh, command usually only comes in some of the scientific packages where they have all the c libraries they haven't created a full package like or dot deb would be right for example there are some scientific packages uh, which comes uh, uh, you know, in your Ubuntu, it comes in its own repository, like, you know, its own app store. They're already well configured and everything is there. So you, when you simply write sudo app get installed something, it will run smoothly. But in some of the software cases, you have to install all of the dependencies by yourself. Say, for example, your system has Python, maybe three installed, right? 3.8 or so. But that particular program was 2.7. So you have to get 2.7 also installed along with others. How do you manage that? Is something that you learn when you uh, look at the source code compilation, right? So that is very, very advanced level, but basic source code compilation is something you should be able to do by using a make utility. That we'll see in the near future, okay? Let's stick to what we learned in week three, okay? Don't get confused. So week three is all that was, right? Uh, some things about uh, this null null file and uh, dev null, right? Yeah, dev null. Uh, redirection, uh, you know, say you, for example, in one of the open sessions, what I think we had taken and taken up an example where we were just interested in knowing whether the command was a success or a failure. We were not interested in its output, whether it is an error output or whether it is an uh, you know success output. 
those uh, output by default the command will print into the uh, print onto your standard out you don't want that so that standard out and that standard error will send it to the dev null where all of the file is just simply just uh, vanish it will not exist uh, on the file system anymore but that exit code is then being used to assess by using and or or operation to do further processing on that string right so yes. you are integrating if else right away in a single line that is what the beauty of uh, uh, this workflow is right where you're using pipes and or operations and you also understand the concept of uh, standard out and standard error okay you guys can play around uh, different ways you can generate these errors and outputs and how to send it into dev null and all that that you guys can work on other thing apart from that what else you guys learned history command and uh, a few things about shell variables yes uh, what uh, about shell variables you guys learned dollar minus and dollar dollar so those are the special shell variables which have been covered right to understand uh, yeah sorry about that so yeah where was i special cell special cell variables. yeah special shell variables right so you want to know the exit code you want to know different way different things right what all uh, special shell variables you guys learned can you just list it out question mark sir dollar question mark what does it do dollar error hyphen. code it gives you an exist status, right? That is what ah, yes. precisely what it gives you. Ah. It gives you an exist status of the command. Then dollar hyphen. Dollar hyphen, what does it give you? It gives all the permissions uh, the particular shell is being run. Then dollar, I think dollar. what else was there? dollar yeah. dollar, what it gives you? Process ID of the shell shell. Right. Current shell is what it will give you, right? Then how about dollar hash? Not said in this particular lecture. Dollar at? I mean, not discussed in the particular week, sir. Okay, that's all it is yeah. discussed. Huh? Sir, okay. I have it out. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. What is this, a child shell? Child shell uh, is spawned from your main shell. Say, for example, uh some of the environmental variables right say in this particular previous example i said that i for a specific code i only need python 2.7 and i don't want to entertain 3.8 which is already installed so i can set that as an environment variable in my child shell while running the script so whatever code you want to run you can run it in a separate shell the child shell in this scenario and when you come out of the child shell, whatever output is you wanted from that can be again given back to your parent shell. So child shell, uh, like from parent shell, uh, data can go to the child shell. But from child shell, it cannot go back to the uh, parent shell. Basically, the shell variable, when that class will happen, right? Uh, the shell variables. Uh, is it covered now? I think week five has it, right? Yes, sir, week five. Yes, sir, week five. Yeah, week in sports. week five, you will you will get even more understanding of this okay uh, why some of the shell variables are only exclusive to child shell or be it in parent shell uh, okay, sir, that is where we will start looking at the differences between the two uh, yeah. so what tmax do sorry uh, what tmax do it is just a, what do you call it it's a multiplexer so is, essentially it is just uh, instead of you starting different SSS session, right? In one SSS session, it is allowing you to run multiple, hmm, what do you call? Windows panes. Panes. So, so if we run different windows on uh, one bash, so does it not make sense? Like we cannot uh, transfer data from one window to another. So is it not like child shell and parent shell relationship? No, no. Can you come again? Uh, like if we launch at uh, Tmux and in that Tmux we launch a different window. Mm. So in that also we cannot uh, export data uh, like 
like in oh, the, the let's let's share your screen okay start a tmux session and you uh, shell variable it is covered right you know how to set up a simple shell variable uh, yes i do know yeah just try setting it in one particular pane and try calling it into another pane see if it works or not hmm. okay Okay, what would happen? Anyone? Uh, it's not working, sir. Hmm? It's not working. What is not working? Can you just elaborate? I mean, that particular value we given for the shell variable, it's not being restored to other pane. So, uh, your tmux right it spawns its own child shell uh, which spawns its own shell at the end yes sir even the process so, id process id is different yeah so you can simply just check by running pids uh, the bash pid and uh, can you just show share your screen and run a tree command in the first one sir i'm not able to share my screen can anyone share I will share sir, just a second. So how do you look at the process tree? PS uh, You can use PS tree. So let's just try using that and we'll see, you know, as we spawn you know, what do you call pains, right? Uh, how the bash ID process ID is changing and which one is the parent and which one is the child? Is my screen visible, sir? Yes, it is. Yes. The process ID is different. Yeah, process IDs are different. I want to see which shell spawned which uh, other. So you, you need to look at the tree view of the processes. Which command it is? PS tree itself. Continuous. Right. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah. One second. Just tree. Just a tree. Uh, no, PS tree is like. Yeah, one second. An output of PS tree coming. Uh, sir, can we use grep? I guess PS minus F will be more efficient because it will show the parent process IDs. The next thing I was going to say, you know, look up the man page. What command you need to use to see uh, the exact uh, PS tree. Uh, so you just look at the, the same command you run it everywhere and see what it tells you. Okay. 
what you what we want to see is that now each of the bash has a separate pid right yes sir yeah but what essentially we want to, to see is if any of it is a child shell yeah what would there is there is this uh the below one is the child cell right sir which one uh the, there are three uh, right which one is the parent yeah. one and which one is the uh, i mean the below is the child definitely when they when we compare it to the uh one which is right side above So here you see it is six six zero six, then six yes, six sir. one five, and then then so the six left five is, nine seven. It is parent for both left one. No, but how do you know it is parent? How you can say that this is the parent one? Uh, child should have a higher number of PID. Is uh, that all there is to it? No, sir. Uh, basically, in this representation, we'll get something like. Uh, Slash underscore bash. Why don't you start a child shell in a one of the pane and then run the ps command again? Sir, I'm not sure how to start. Oh, hmm. you just need to say bash and enter. Now you do ps. Yeah. Hmm. Oh. Okay, and, but here we are not able to see the representation, right? What was the yes, command? Sir. For the tree representation. Ah, uh, ps uh, hyphen hyphen forest. Why don't you do that then? Yeah. Hmm? So These are the bash. The next, when you type the bash, right, it started a child shell, and ps is spawn. ps is running under that, right? What are we doing here? Uh, sir, one doubt. Yeah, go ahead. Sir, what is the difference between child process and child shell? And how can we find it? Like it is a child process or it is a child shell? It is a child shell. We are talking about child process. What do you mean by that? Sir, in lecture, sir said that if there is a backslash and underscore, that means it's hmm. a child process. Hmm. Of? Of that particular bash. Okay. Why don't you run one more command in here? Uh, yes, run a sleep command and run the ps hyphen hyphen first. Sleep command in the background. They sleep. Uh, oh, oh. Say hundred. Run again the ps first. Mm. Yeah, this is also child. So it, these are essentially running these processes under this particular bash. But looking at these two, can you tell me whether the left pane is a child shell of the? If the left pane is a parent shell of the right pane? No, sir. Uh, they are no, individual. Right? They are individual to each other. Yes. Sir. Right. So it's an independent run of bash, not the child of uh, the left pane. So essentially, it yes. is starting independent bash sessions, right? Yes, sir. Yes. So that is how. I mean, that's why. I mean, from the name itself, I think we can. Say it's it's like uh, opening a new terminal. Yes. Ah, uh, sir. Teams. Yeah. How to how to terminate this particular bash shell, sir? Here I have opened a child bash. Just type exit. Exit. Oh yes. Now you do ps three. Ps forest. Okay. And you'll see that there is only one now. Oh, you yes. won't be able to get the. History also. Yes, there's See? only one. Yeah. So if you exit now, it will also exit from this. Yes, sir. Sir, can we uh, using this PS uh, PID? Can we like uh, in this pane? Can we enter into this particular bash? You can kill. Try killing that if you know uh, it is there. So say for example, in the right hand side, you have you know that six six zero six is running, right? Yes, sir. From the left pen, try to kill that ID. Zero uh six. -huh. Okay. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah, it got killed. Right. Yes, sir. Now from uh, right hand pen, try to kill the left hand pen. What's the PID? Six five nine. Six five nine seven. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. That is that. Um, so we this is what for the 
uh, week three, right? This, these these are important concepts. Unless and until you don't try it yourself, right? Even if we talk about it, even if we discuss it, right? Not necessarily your hands will remember what that is. Okay, so this requires a lot of practice because of the, it is syntax heavy, right? You need to know that ps hyphen hyphen forest is the command you need to use. Otherwise, you'll keep on searching for some time till you get into that. So it, it's better to become, you know, make it a habit. So even in during exams or even uh, when you are actually running into a project or something, it becomes easy for you. This develops your own workflow also. Okay. Oh, uh, sir, I didn't get difference between child shell and child process. So, whatever process you are running in a shell, right, becomes the process of that particular shell. Okay, say you are running into a child shell, that process, right? So it will become the part of that child shell. Can you try uh, uh, creating? What do you call? Create one more instance of pain. Yes, sir. Remix. No, Tmux is already on. Yeah. Yeah. So just simply uh, run bash and then run a command called sleep. Sleep 100 or 200 something. Okay. Yes. Now go to your right pane. <clears throat> no, here you need to know the process IDs, right? Right. Uh, Get the process ID. 7847. Yeah, not for the sleep process, for the bash. <laughs> Yes, okay, now you go to your right pane. Uh, try killing this process sleep. Oh, instead of killing this process, kill the bash. Kill the bash. 7840. Okay. okay. See if the sleep uh, is running after that. Yeah. Okay. So bash is killed. Now do PS for us again. Okay. Yes. Yeah, sleep is running? Yes, it's being running. How it is running? You killed the bash, right? Yeah. So it is still running, right? Yes. So why don't you do? Uh, what do you call? So Kill. there is some some concept called zombie process, right? Usually, when you start a process in a bash, right, child bash, it should actually should get killed, right? In some instances, it doesn't get killed. Such processes are usually called zombie processes. For this process, the parent shell becomes um, your the main process which starts your system, that init process. So what's the name, sir? Is it? Zombie, zombie processes. Yeah, zombie. Because it doesn't have a parent bash, right? Parent shell. So these are usually owned by the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the init process itself. So there are various ways uh, Linux system starts. Okay, there is a bit more you need to read into how usually Linux boots up and all that. But just remember this thing that whenever you kill a bash, instead of killing the bash itself, you should first kill your uh, the child process which is running inside it. Then you kill the child bash. Uh, sir, basically, when I kill that whole pain, then uh, that sleep got killed. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, but uh, like because its parent was running right that bash uh, yeah uh, the child shells parent shell was running which is why you could see it yes sir but yeah. once you were able to kill the main uh, thread itself it killed but it is always a better practice usually kill your process one by one right you get yes. a lot of time right you know the system will hang because these resources are unaccounted for there have there are certain ways they must keep track of such processes which you know uh, keeps on running forever and they try to kill it out. There is certain routines built into it. Okay, so I think with week four, uh, we introduced what uh, the sir. regular expressions, right? Yeah, sir. Uh, sir. So can we uh, categorize all the distributions into Red Hat, SUSE, and Debian based on package managers? Uh, yes, sir. and their origins. Yeah, Red Hat, definitely Debian. And then which one you said? SUSE, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, but sir. what about BSD? Uh, which one, sir? BSD. Uh, 
Berkeley's of uh, the Berkeley software distribution, uh, which eventually what Apple is using, uh, is also like there are so many. Okay, so okay, sir. These three are very big. Uh, especially the Red Hat one is really big because of its commercial use. Ubuntu is very, very big because uh, many of the users use it and increasingly now most of the companies are switching to Ubuntu uh, because of the support they receive. SUSE also used to be powerful, but it was mostly enterprise, which was very famous. Enterprise. Yes. So there are also courses which will teach you specifically that oh, online yes, if you look at it. So it's really and sir, uh, from when the mouse came to existence? With Apple, I think. That's uh, oh. Steve Jobs who, uh, like with Apple, I don't remember its version now. But uh, they were the first one to think about the graphical user interface. Okay, and sir. to have a mouse and the way it is interactive. If you look at the very old versions of even the fonts which you see right on your systems, yes, the, the way it looks and feels. Uh, yes, the sir. processing, word processing, and everything. Uh, a lot of has been, you know, contributed by Mac. When they were developing, they wanted to have all, even the paint program which you have, right? Ah, yes, sir. To draw stuff and all that. That was also yes, something which they have started uh, first. Because yes, essentially, sir. these systems were uh, only used to be command line uh, interfaces. People used to run it, you know, long software programs to do certain set of operations. Maybe it is related to businesses or related to scientific computing. But it was Mac, I think, who brought it to the general audience for the first time. Yes, sir. Uh, sir. Yeah. One small doubt. Sir, I came across this uh, specific command sudo hyphen i. Mm. What's it meant for, sir? I mean, I'm getting it. Uh, I'm, I'm being entered as a root user right now. In your own system, right? Yeah, sir. Why don't you look at the manual page of sudo? Mm -hmm. Sudo, what it what it does basically? Uh, like uh, uh, so, for you, sir. Permission. Yeah. So basically, if you want to install, it, so for example, you won't have a permission uh, to install software in the what do you call in mm -hmm. our virtual machine, right? Yes, sir. So even if you try to do use sudo, it will just deny it because there is a set number of or uh, set members of sudo uh, group. Okay. So not everyone can be a sudo. -er. But this allows you to install software without inputting your password. Once you do that, try installing a software here. Yes, sir. Anything which you know, easy, simple. Uh, not sure, sir. Can you name any? Is it APT? Is it uh, Linux or is it uh, Mac? Sir, this is Ubuntu, sir. Oh, this is Ubuntu. Okay. Yes. So, say for example, the tiny one. NCAL is installed in your system? Uh, I guess. Just yes. type NCAL. Uh, sir, NCAL is not installed in most of the packages. Yes, sir. It got installed. No. Right. It, did it ask you anything? No, sir. Did it ask you for a password? Uh, sir, basically, once we enter password in a sudo, when once, for example, mm. if you try installing uh, uh, one software using sudo, for uh, for some time, it won't ask for password, sir. Again. Mm. Mm. Then what's the but, use of entering into root? So this is your root, OK? Whatever folders and file you will be creating here will only have access to the root user, OK? OK. okay. Not your general user. So usually, when you do sudo, right, it is usually sudo apt install, that is fine. But if you enter into sudo mode and become a root and then install, everything becomes only accessible to root and not the general user. OK. So usually we try to avoid this because um, we keep on forgetting on to uh, which packages you have uh, what do you call access to and which packages you don't. Yeah. Or files, not even if not packages, right? So yes, you, you so, will uh, need one, to sir, one question for this yeah. Linux actually for package administration, which mm -hmm. kind of software which we'll be using, sir, generally. Like for example, 
in previous versions, like in Microsoft, we have SMS and operations manager and everything so that we can distribute the packages based on the privilege rights. It will be installed and only for certain users will be a use, use rights and only for certain users it will be a little bit of a restricted or a admin or something like that. Yeah. Is that which type of package in Linux based environment similar to that? You just have to manage the groups, server. So say a uh, set of groups will have only access to these packages, right? You can restrict that by using groups. So we are uh, putting on the groups, uh, uh, restrict on the group side. And then uh, uh, groups then the... users also you can do. But you, say you are running a big organization. It is impossible okay. for you to do it for uh, just the users, right? So you instead right. you will create, for example, for this particular class, I, we have a NES group. Yes, we sir. know uh, all of you are member of that group. So when yeah. when we put restriction to that group, it becomes universal to all of the users. Okay. There, right? Yes. And say there are also other students who may want to you know try logging in and or to read the file or you know write the file. Right. They may come into others category. So you can manage in that sense. But usually okay. groups were the standard way people used to manage the uh, permissions and yes, uh, packages. Yes, uh, for the Linux system. Okay, so that's how it's simple way to do it. Actually, it's very simple actually compared to Microsoft. There, uh, you really have to dwell into the uh, the full structure, right? There are so Wait, many classes. The policy and... manager will be taking care of everything yes, else. Yes. Stuff, everything else. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. Okay. So, in week one, you will learn again. Let's revise. What? Uh, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, the VM uh, on which computer is it running, sir, in IIT Metas? Oh, it is running on Google Cloud. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Actually, there is. Yeah, Gaurav. Sir, in yesterday's TA session, uh, we were discussing about uh, old questions asked in old uh, question mm -hmm. papers. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, I joined in late, so I missed out that portal link and where and how one can access them. It was something like ACE or some, I, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, ACE grade. Can you just put that into the master section? Yes, sir. ACE grade dot in. Thank you. Do they don't, don't they have published on YouTube, sir? This QPs. Oh, this uh, yesterday session, the TA session, will that be on YouTube, right? No, no, no. TA sessions are not on YouTube. TA sessions are uh, like usually one to one session. Okay. So all of the students who come in will receive the only the instructor sessions are the ones. We will have it live. But in case you want certain things to be on a YouTube for you to see, right? You just request it through the TA and we'll try to get a session separate for that. Online for you people. Yeah, Dhruv. Uh, yes, sir. I wanted to ask one doubt. Sir, uh, mm -hmm. if I am stopping sleep command and sending it to mm -hmm. background, uh, does mm -hmm. it uh, keep on stop or it starts running? If it is in the background, it will keep on running in the background. Okay? That is what we sending it to the background means. So you want to interrupt, then you have to use a different uh, signal for it to send it to. Sir, pause. Like, sir, like I stopped it uh, in foreground and then I sent it to background. Will it automatically start yeah. running? Yeah, Dhruv, can you just share your screen and show it? Because that way it is easy for me to understand what you are saying. Okay, okay, sir. One minute. <laughs> uh, sir, what, what is the difference between TA session and the instruction session? Uh, TA sessions are usually held by USC, right? They are proficient in the course and they are able to understand the, you know, uh, the, and usually it is held almost every single day in the evening from 7 to 8. Instructor sessions you will have twice a week, uh, one for the solving with instructor and another one is open session where you get to ask uh, open-ended questions. Yeah, or your doubts but in ta session oh. you will have it every day say you are working today on something right evening you will definitely have a help available from 7 to 8 you can log in 
simply ask those question and they will be able to answer it or help you out okay okay yeah. uh, one more thing in week 5 mm -hmm. uh, uh the lectures are numbered 222324 is it okay i'll just go uh, yes uh whether uh, something is missing in uh, as a 21 or something uh, no 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 i think in the back end the operations teams has made a mistake in numbering them okay. Okay. so i'll just ask them to number them appropriately okay okay uh, thank Sorry. you for pointing it out sir make sure that okay. yeah muthu uh, krishna sir can uh, if we start the sleep command in foreground Uh, and after that is it possible to send it to background if you stopped it or if you killed it uh, no sir i mean it should continue and as well as uh, run in background yeah you can simply just you know attach and ampersand at the end of it right to send uh, it to no, sir. but uh, we have started it uh, without ampersand you can interrupt it and then you can just do uh, what is the command to send it to background uh um, well starting we can simply use ampersand at the end press bg yeah bg bg right and and you you need to give the process id right so by oh. so by no, if, uh, typing bg with the, the process id we can send it to background is it hmm. just uh, share your screen oh, who was going to share the screen uh, i think uh, dhruv sir yeah also can i ask you how no, sir to, actually the website is not opening how to interrupt the process uh, control is it sir control z right yes sir. so it will yes, partially stop it right yes sir if i do just simply you will have jobs id right uh, yes sir so uh, can you just share your screen i'll just let's just look take a look at that as an example uh, yes Sir, is my screen visible? so what should we do now so now you want to what do you call interrupt it right uh, you said control sir, i mean z to we, it, right? we need to send it to background yeah first you need to interrupt it right oh okay sir. yes sir. right now if you this is one right what does you run jobs command jobs command will show you what all process are running right so job id is one so you can simply do uh, what you wanted to send it to background right so bg uh, space yes, one will send it this run bg space one enter now you can see that it is running in the background you can see uh, in the uh, can you use uh, top command top command or you can also do vs ox yeah top okay. command vs top top it is running right ah uh, yes sir running so that is what you can do otherwise take a look at the pid of that sleep command you can interrupt it again and use the pid to run using the yes okay. we should be able to do that 
but if you use control c right it will just kill the command right so ah, you should know ah, yes, sir, yes. Uh, what does control z and control c mean okay in terms of what kind of signal it is sending to the yeah it's there sir i have one question here okay uh, aditya please go on aditya yeah uh, sir i yeah. just uh, yes sir i just had a doubt in the lab tasks i uh, to uh, send the process to the background uh, i did sleep space th thousand space ampers and and it also mm. worked so i wrote that in the report so uh, is that mm. all right yeah 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 that is the standard way of putting it into a background what is question was is that oh, oh, hey, i am already running a program right and now i want to send it to the background yes. is it possible or not so you need to first interrupt it and then just use uh the bg with the uh called jump side right so fg uh, will bring it to okay, the foreground sir. right uh, yes sir is the process running hi sir ani so sir um, if we need can we use like this same for fg also yeah try using it Uh, so here also we should use uh, job side or but uh, uh, i using both okay. that will answer your question right up there uh, yes a job side yeah now interrupt it and see whether you can do it with the first of all yeah dru go ahead uh, sir uh, uh, actually muthu can you scroll up uh, yeah Is it enough? Oh yes, uh, yes, sir. This doubt we were asking uh, in last TA session, sir. Why does it uh, in time section it always so zero zero? And here in bash we can see it's showing zero one at this time. Why? Where is it zero zero? Here, sir. This one. Can you run it again? The TA. Yes. Hmm. Can you uh, let's just take a look at one of them. Which command can we use? Can you run one more bash? Simply bash and do again the PS or S. Thing is zero and why there is is no, not zero, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So basically, uh, as far as I remember correctly, uh, it is the CPU time which shows you know, how much time it took it to launch. Yes, sir. It is the CPU time so, which it has took to complete the process. Yeah, start the process. So basically. uh the first one actually took little bit more time but the so, time which it has took to complete the process yeah start the process so basically uh the first one actually took little bit more time but rest of them didn't take much time so what is your your hours minutes and seconds right yes sir <laughs> so the first instant of the bash took some time maybe what uh one second One millisecond or one, one second. Okay. Is it second or? It is second, right? Ah, you have hour, minutes, and second. Zero one second means almost a second it took to run bash. But yes, so thus, I mean, is any command is there to take this much time? I mean, for hours. Uh, that is what I am thinking. You know, can we test it using some? Command? I know. Is, is there uh, any command that can take um, significant time? Yes, yeah, significant time. Say, uh, for example, uh, in one of my work, I used to use computational, scientific computation. Right? We used to have our own script, which used to run analysis and all that. So that used to have a higher uh, number of time here. Yeah. 
because we used to use all the processes to run some calculations over and over again. So it how used to tell me think? how much. Oh, we used to run it for days. Okay, <laughs> so okay. we used to get twenty-four hours slot. After twenty-four hours slot is finished, right? It will okay. automatically stop. It will get killed, and then we have to resubmit it again. Not to the super computer. So that's how we used to you manage the time uh, there. So, but uh, uh, better, what job, sir? You uh, were uh. no. Previously, I used to. do some simulation studies molecular simulations okay. and protein simulation there we use uh, bit bigger scripts and it was that you heavy on the computer okay sir there we used to get different things. okay so i think let's just start with the fourth week okay i because that is one of the more important weeks can you can any one of you summarize what is there in the fourth week from your quiz point of view Uh, it's all about uh, regular expressions. We are having basically two regular expression engines. Hmm. One is uh, grep and the one second. So, what is a regular expression? Let Let's start there. Yeah, pattern of text, is it? Right. It is a language by which we identify the pattern. Right. Say some set of pattern we want to identify from a text. will use some symbolic language to identify that pattern right that is what has been introduced in the week 4 right so what all concepts in the bre and ere are covered basic thing mm. few special characters in bre and gre yeah. sorry like bre and ere uh, like dot star square brackets cap dollar Yeah, uh, just uh, one of you share your screen and open a man page for uh, grep. We'll take a look at all the different regular expressions we had. Right, I think that has a nice summary of uh, all the meta characters and the. Just go for man and. Okay, if you scroll down, it's towards the end. Okay, grep is something which we use, right? Let's just just look at the grep first. Okay, so anyone can tell me? Can anyone tell me what is the full form of grep? Global regular expression. Yes, Under. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what is, so, what essentially is that? What description says? It searches for pattern in each file, right? Pattern is one or more patterns separated by a new line character, and grep prints each line that matches a pattern. Typically, patterns should be quoted when grep is used in a shell command. Okay, a file of what stands for a standard input. If no file is given, recursive searches examine the working directory, and non-recursive searches read standard input. Okay, so. you have extended grep and you have just grep right so extended grep gives you ere right while without extended hyphen e if you don't use high capital hyphen e it will give you what ere right basic regular expression so apart from that what else you have is hyphen e if you are going to use perl based regular expression you are use hyphen capital p Uh, can is, you scroll down? What is Perl based uh, regular? Perl is the language in itself, which is very powerful for pattern matching. Okay, so okay. if you are familiar with how Perl works and how its regular expression works, you can use that uh, with the grep instead of using bre or ere. So you have bre, ere, and then you have Perl. Uh, even okay. in uh, your uh, other languages, the, the regular expression. is present in almost all of the language it's just the way they are using is different okay so if you scroll down a bit uh, in the man page right go almost towards the end so these all these flags you need to learn okay basically these are very important flags the different use cases of the grep command but what i really want to bring your bring to your notices 
yeah there it is okay no no go a page up so it starts from here okay it says regular expressions it will give you some brief overview of what regular expressions are and if you scroll down it will tell you all of the different can you scroll down it will tell you these you know characters and all that and if you keep on scrolling down it will talk about anchoring also right if it is a caret symbol it is anchored at the beginning if it is a dollar sign it is anchored at the end right so that way they are the meta characters then you have uh, backslash characters and special expressions also if you want to have a word boundary slash small b is what we use right and uh, this uh, what do you call it this alnum with underscore uh, with caret symbol all of this they and then the repetition also at the bottom right it gives you all of this information so what a repetition is then you have what is a question mark means a preceding item is optional and matched at most ones so either that character preceding character is present or it is not present right? and it is only matched once only then the question mark is what that for example http and https right how will you see if a, tag, a text has http and https both uh, present uh, so uh, can anyone tell me the regular expression in such a scenario say so you have list of uh, websites right and you want to get all the websites which has only http or https it shouldn't have anything else uh, other than that uh, in the website itself. Say, for example, FTP or uh, other. Thing. So you can use question mark uh, where you want just, you know, one that character is either optional or it should be present. So maybe HTTP and then question mark or HTTPS and then question mark. You can simply test it by using an echo command right echo you type it out a long string and then see if it matches only with http or https okay, something happened i right, sir just a second sir. Yeah. sharing one second so you guys started using uh, have you guys done the week four content from the vm Yes, sir. You okay, got all ten of it. Yes, sir. Yes. Is it easy? Ah, yes, sir. Yes. Completely. So, sir? yeah, Prabhaka. Yeah, Prabhaka. Sorry. Oh, uh, sir. I usually get confused in the grouping part. Can you please uh, put some light on it? Sure. So you mean to say this, right? The curly braces and n. Ah, uh, yes, sir. So, and then you have star and then you have plus also, right? So oh, can you just, you know, guys, tell me one by one. So what is it that it is uh, confusing you in this particular set, in this curly brace? Uh, so like in the, the lab, then... uh, in the lab activity, there was one question where we have to mask the IP addresses. Mm. So what I, uh, I was not able to group the first part of the the that the part which comes before first uh the dot and then to mm. group the second part and then to group the third part i was not able to uh, group them because uh, want, IP addresses uh, contains one two three so i was not able to use the character class there uh, mm -hmm. i tried one method of doing character class with, uh, where, uh, where i did a uh, digit and then uh, in uh, uh, curly braces i put one uh, with a pipe and with a two and then pipe three you just all you had to do there was right and n comma so what n represents here is it should have at least that much or more than that yeah right that was the uh thing which we had right or otherwise you know that there will be at least one digit and at max three digit in that yes. scenario i will use the last one where is n comma m but i will say n is one minimum one and maximum three digit I will allow. Only those you I want you to select. So it will use the the last one, right? Say so if you want to only select anything up to that time, 
right like at most three times should be there so comma and m so these are the different use cases you can just simply can you just uh, uh Shubash, can you just uh, in the left pane uh, yes. take, take an example of his ip address given you know any arbitrary ip address Yeah, now you pipe it and use grip. Let's see if it. What I have Maybe uh, instead of, you know, type uh, echo so and so is an IP address. Then you can just try to grab the IP address from the string. So start with a double quote in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Then IP, IP address. Right. And now what we will try. Oh, do that. Sir, what I have to use, sir? Hyphen O. Hyphen. It will only select the the pattern match. Okay. So I want to select the first three digits. How will I do that? Mm, simply through? like uh... through or Prakar. Whose question was it? Oh, sir, mine. Yeah. So Prakar, just tell me how will you use it? Um, uh, like what I did uh, in that at that particular time was to clear character class it by digit, mm. and here it was three, so I will use uh, in braces three. Okay, so just simply enter it. Uh, just enter it. Yes, it is giving you the first three digits because you are not specifying the character, right? Say instead of the IP address, if I had something else in the beginning, it will only select the first three characters. Or see, if I had a space before 196, right? It would have selected that space as well, right? So this is general character, general way of uh, doing things. So let's go by what Prakar is saying. Right? Let's just go by digit. So how do you select digit uh, in the uh, grip? Just go up and use the what zero to nine. This is how you use in yes, zero to nine. Yeah. Sir, give me a moment, sir. There is some issue with my browser. Uh, sir, go ahead. Uh, sir, for this question, uh, we can use uh, substitution, no, sir, in VI editor. Yeah, you can use substitution. Also. Uh, but say uh, in VI editor, you can you may be able to process one file. Right? Say you want to process you know, hundred files across different files and folders, uh, then it yes. becomes not that feasible. So from mm. that perspective, uh, think of how we can use grep as well. Mm, yes, sir. But editors are really essential. Okay, uh, you can simply do a lot of search and replace and other operations also. It can also give you a option to you know uh, do replacement from a particular line uh, or yes. between particular lines also. Yes. Sir. That uh, way, it is very powerful. Yes. Sir. Uh, and sir, uh, regarding the second week practice assignments in VM. Hmm. Uh, some of the questions which are covered in week two has also been removed. Some of the questions which are covered in the week two has also been removed. Sir. Removed. Okay, I'll just check it. Yes, sir. Yes, From sir. Three to six. Okay, three to six. Ah, regarding the brace expansion, is it? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I already asked them to put back there. Yeah, uh, yeah, Krishna. Yeah, so I think it was Prakas' question, right? Why don't you share your screen? Oh, yes, sir. Try doing the same.
Hello. Yeah, can you increase the font size? Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, so go ahead. So just go with one digit, okay? Let's just forget about whether you get uh, all three or not. Just remove it and just type as is. Let's just check whether all the digits are selected or not. Remove the curly braces. So it is selecting all of it, right? One by one. So now you put one or two. Say two, not one. Ah, uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you. This is a. Uh, uh, what do you call? You need to put a capital E after o because you you are using extended regular expression right with the curly braces so either you have to introduce blacks backslash hmm. you need to put either backslash or you need to use ere yeah. now it is selecting now you want to have uh what do you call either two or three so it should select the first three one right so one comma three you can give or two comma three so it is selecting all of those right and say you want only three at max three so remove the two uh, no no comma three not just three so it will select you know at max three anything till three now you want to have have only till three and onwards so you can do three comma remove that comma and put it at the end comma and you'll see you'll get only one okay uh, so one more thing uh, while i was trying the uh, lab question i mistake mistakenly uh, group two parts hmm. And then, uh, re, uh, then shifted the one part to other. Mm. Uh, like, how did this happen? Like by mistake, I thought I did it. Is it possible to shift the whole group to first part and to uh, the other group to the other part? Like shifting also happens in editors. Uh, while uh, like other than substitution. Hello. Uh, hello. Yeah. Sorry. Am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Can you just show me that instance of your lab because it is very difficult for me to visualize what uh, you had done, right? Uh, so it is not uh, saved. Like uh, I didn't saved it. Huh. Like I was saying, see, uh, okay, because uh, there's a roll number. For which... example, can you just open your terminal and show me? Yes, sir. Take an example. Say, for example, mm -hmm. you take that roll number and try uh, uh, mimicking exactly what you have done. Yeah, Gaurav. In this regular expression um, thing only, I have one question. Um, mm -hmm. We use these curly bracket bra braces for um, for mentioning how, from which uh, field to which field. Mm -hmm. we, Not we which field to which field. These are quantifiers. Right? How In what quantity you want to have? Minimum or maximum? That is what we have done. So we are saying from zero to nine, any digit, right? That is starts from zero to nine. That is one single digit. It can have at least three instances or more. 
that is what the last expression was so we can group this pattern and um, we can also ask for how many matching uh, fields did we get mm, right in the line sure. so how will I you mean, do like um, I, i'll take example of cut command in cut command we give delimiter as whatever the delimiter is let's say mm. comma and then mm. we mention that i want field number 1 and 2 mm. minus f 1 and 2 so um in that scenario if i want to say i want to get the last field and i don't mm. know the number for that field mm. is there a way to achieve it in cut command in cut or maybe in grep either in grep or in cut either ways No, no. In cut command, uh, what do you call? So in I can do this tokenization in grep command in using grep as well. Like if comma is the delimiter, mm -hmm. then I can um, do this kind of tokenization in grep as well. Right. Like, mm -hmm. Let's just but, you know share your screen after this. Okay, give me an example, and we will talk. We'll get to it. Yeah, Prakar, go ahead. Yes, sir. so I was uh, what I was trying to do. I was trying to group this first part and uh, and uh, second this. So by mistake, uh, I I don't know what happened. Uh, this part got in the first uh, has got in the first place, and this has got into the last place. Mm. So what uh, probable uh, this regular expression you have used? Just put it after that. Oh. You can just use grep after that. Were you using what this? Uh, Your regular basis. No, like, to group it. Oh, uh, I I used it in VI editor. Can I uh, make this yeah, file yeah. open in VI editor? Yeah, yeah. You can just simply echo it that into a file, and then you can use that into echo command. Instead of cat, you can just simply say echo. Echo and redirect to a file. No, no, you don't need to pipe it into VR. Just close, enter, and then you do VR. can you walk us through your regular expression while you type oh uh, sorry can you walk us through your regular expression why you included the backslash uh, yeah then why you included backslash d all of that uh, like for uh, like uh, i wrote this because to uh, to form this group mm. and then i wrote f to include this and then i am grouping these numbers Oh, so next, I don't know what I did, so I uh, actually not remember. But this is how I formed the group, and suddenly something happened, and this has gone to this side, and this has gone to this side. Yeah. So go ahead, do. Maybe so I, guess, I, guess I called this first group. Uh, uh, I called. I want to call this first group, and uh, maybe I want to actually mask it uh, to star. I guess. that was the question 
and uh, I do backs backslash and then call third group and something happened. I guess I wrote this only this expression only. I don't exactly remember it, but something like that only. Just run it. Invalid command. What is this? Unmeshed backslash. Backslash unmeshed. So enter. Just press enter. Again, you are there. Uh, you can go to your uh, previous command, right? Uh, how? Colon and up arrow. Colon. Like, no, how? Anyways, what essentially with the regular uh, braces, what you do is that is used for grouping. Right? For example, you know you have uh, this 23F300561 as one group, right? And yes. then probably you must have created CS1102 IRDM as second group. Okay. The Say if you want to switch the position, you simply, uh, after that, you just have to say backslash two and backslash one. So backslash two will be printed first, and then backslash one will be printed thereafter. So you will get this position three, basically. Oh, okay. So uh, down the line, you will learn something called said frame editor. Okay. Yes. There uh, you will be using this uh, type of uh, language more. So once we get there, right, we'll revisit this problem. Just remind me, okay, if I skip during the set week, right? Yes. Uh, sir. We'll come back to this problem and then we'll look at, you know, how we can switch uh, all of these places the way we want. And this comes very handy, say, uh, if you have joined columns, right, and you want to get them switch position or something of that sort. Or maybe you have first name and last name, like first name in a column and second name. In a Last time in the second column. Now you want to flip it. How will you do that? Just by using instead. It's something you will learn. Okay. So don't worry about it. Yes. Sir. Yeah, Goro, uh, go ahead and share your screen. Yeah. So those who are still here, right? I want you to finish all of your week work uh, practice assignments as well. On the VM. So, if you guys have any queries there, also we can take it here. Yeah, Goro, am I audible? Yeah. Yeah, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, you're audible yeah so let's say if i um store this directory listing into a file or if i pipe this directory listing into grep command i want to select names of the files or the directories that are at the end mm. so i thought of um delimiting this entire string entire mm. line mm. with space mm. but then as means these number of spaces are um, varying between different lines yes so i can't Just say wanted that this to have the last one. part of it right yes yes so you can simply use grep right yeah so but in grep i'll means Again, if I tokenize on on space, there will be multiple fields, and I don't know how. No, to like select. let's look at this listing, right? Can anyone yeah. tell me what regular expression can you use to get at least the string which will have at least the file names in it? Uh, anyone? Sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, but uh, the same kind of situation I used. Uh, space as a delimiter and it worked there sir yeah so you didn't have issues with multiple spaces uh, no sir so what was your command after ls hyphen l what did you use uh yes sir pipe mm. then uh that yeah grip. so are we uh, so what's the goal sir 
goal is to get the only the files which you see in the last column right uh, okay so so yeah so we can i we can directly use cut no sir how say in this particular scenario you know number of columns okay even ah, yes, then sir. let's say you know cut command okay cut command can take only one single character as a delimiter yes sir yes in here he is giving space okay yes sir uh, what else he has to do nine sir yeah if nine <laughs> Uh, but uh, when I did it was sir, in portal, I think. Hmm? Uh, and sir, uh, I think uh, one of the TAs are uh, Sarat sir. Uh, hmm. He used some command to compress the space. Hmm. So what was that command? Uh, I am. I did at this time. I don't remain. I remember it sir properly. Okay. Uh, so basically what the issue here is that right the output of the ls is formatted right yep yeah so it is formatted in such a way that uh, left a line or something right so let's forget about cut command yep. can you tell me what grep command you can use to just select the uh, end of the files end of the uh, yes sir so we can use uh, a space dot star dollar Space dot, dot star, I mean star dollar. dollar dot star dollar dollar. That's it. Uh, yeah, I believe. Yeah, and uh, hyphen o would be fine. Mm. So you if tell we, me, it is selecting hyphen, everything. Uh, if you use hyphen o, it will only print the last one. And it's showing that the entire line is the match. Yeah. Why don't yeah. you do you know what yeah. like he said, right? Yeah, and then, then enter. Okay. To this regular expression, tell me, sir, we can what use black, else can we use? Backslash B. Hmm? Uh, word bound. We can use word bound, sir. Uh, yes, okay. sir. That also would be fine. Where? Uh, in the beginning. At the beginning. Yeah. After the single quote, backslash. Then, B. then a space would be fine. Uh, then, then the space is not necessary. I think. So. Okay. Just enter. Uh, no, sir. Anyone else? Instead of slash b, why don't you use just space? Ah, uh, sir. Even then, it's only eliminating that uh, permission stream, sir. Mm. You tried with that? Yeah, sir. A single space. Yeah, sir. Press enter. They're still showing everything to him. Okay, so what what pattern do you see in the second last column? Uh, so, sir, number something. Hmm. So if I want to use cut command like he said, right? What is it that I have to use? Go to your previous cut command. So I'll have to ls minus l cut minus t. Right? That way there are only two columns, right? Yeah. So again, f what? F2? Yeah. Enter. First, take, take a look at it. Okay. Mm. Now, next thing. No space can be used, and uh, or I can, yeah, trim. I can I can do this. Trip minus v. So what does hyphen v stands for? Inverse. Uh, in inversion. Inversion. Inverse selection. Okay. So. What is it that you don't want to select? First three characters. Numbers. 
uh, we can use once again the cut command right yeah 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 you can use multiple cut commands yes sir what's the problem with this i mentioned three characters from the starting mm. and it didn't show me any output you don't want them so, yeah i don't want them oh okay it will there will actually be a match everywhere so i need to mention uh, some filter criteria like Zero two nine. Just uh, can you backspace? You can just simply use cut command also. Okay? Yeah. Also just take a look at the output of the first cut. Minus T space minus F two. Only two, or you wanted to have everything after that? Yeah, the second field was the name of the file, right? Or yeah, time. but it yeah. had also link information, right? If you want to restore that after the F two, you need to just press and. Back. So from two onwards, it yeah. will print everything. Uh, sir, this yeah. like this, right? No, no, no. Dash. Just after two. Okay. Yeah. Dash. So uh, sir, that, everything okay. which is after two. Yeah. Okay. The first line contains the number, you know, sir. Yeah, which you don't yeah. want, right? Yeah. So what will be the third command which we will do after this? Can you just move that uh, stop sharing thing? Uh, hmm. Oh, you head command. Hmm? Uh, tail or head or tail, I guess. So what he will have to do? He will have to count all of these. Can we add uh, numbers to this uh, hmm. line? Is there a command to do that? Uh, WC line. Yeah, I want to see line numbers to your output. Is there? Uh, any yes, sir. Uh, we have cat. Uh, cat I think B. I think so. Cat minus N. Uh, no, sir. Minus B. I think. Hmm. Now this way you will get to have an understanding, right? What you want to chop off. So head or tail? Yeah, we'll have to um, first chop off the head. Uh, so we don't know how many lines would be there. So now you got the number of lines, right? From one to eighteen. I guess tail seventeen. Hmm? Yeah, try doing that. You need to minus. Uh, <laughs> so it does take care of everything, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. So this way you can develop a workflow for the piping operation, especially for filtering. So he has filtered what all he wanted to have in a specific. Yeah. Way. What about you, your ls hyphen l, right? Uh, how many hard links it had? Had one link. That's a soft link, right? Yeah. Yeah. How many hard links you had in your directory? I think there's no hard link, at least in direct is in the in this directory. If you see the second column, right after the permission, what does that represent? Number of. Uh, uh, a reference is where this uh, this particular 
file or directory is um, linked. If you want to see the I nodes, right? I node number. What is it? Uh, what command you need to use? ls hyphen ls minus s. L I Q two. Now you see all of that, right? The third column which you see that one one six one 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 two, right? Those are yeah. the number of links, right? Hard links present is what it represents. If it is one, that means it has only one hard link. Okay? Why do you think a directory has okay. two hard links? Say for example, your laptop has hard link two hard link. Where is it coming from? Yeah. Or your CS one one zero two has six hard links. No idea. Sir. So what are a dot and double dot? Two a also ls hyphen l i a. Ls minus a l i a. Either way, what does a it is? It gives you show the all of the information, right? Hidden files also to show, but it will also importantly show dot and double dot. Okay. So take a look at the dot and double dot and their inode numbers. Okay, so if you go back into any one of these DIR one, right? If you go inside the DIR one, check its inode number now, and inside, run the same command ls hyphen li and check its inode uh, inode numbers. So each directory, right? Uh, yeah. The dot and double dots. Like for example, if you see the root, right, in this particular previous output. The root directory has almost 200 inodes, uh, 200 hard links. Yeah, yeah. So e each of the directory subdirectory which you have, right? It will have a inode number. So look at this inode number now. Okay, dot and double dot, and check the inode number of your DIR one here. It is 894. DIR right? one is 1894. Yes. Hmm. And, and outside here... also you have one. 1894. So that's how it becomes two. Okay. And this, uh, if you create one more fo folder into this directory, right? That will have the same inode number as 1141837. Okay. So we, the uh, point is that your dot and double dot, right, are essentially hard links. Okay, that's how root has 200 hard links which you know if you think about it it's not possible if i say dir1 has two hard links one is present in your uh, previous working directory and then another one which is you know dot which is present in your dir1 directory that's how it becomes two okay and that is something like you know I'll read a little bit about that because your dot and double dot right your directories are essentially tables Okay, these are inode okay. tables which stores the information about the files present in the directory. So okay. They're a little different. Read a little bit about that. It will help you out when you start actually doing a lot of work on your own devices, right? And you may need to do a lot of low level coding in that point of time. It will, be, it will come very handy. Okay, apart from this, uh, what else we have covered? What commands we have covered in the week four can i stop sharing sir yeah yeah you can stop sharing anything else besides this we have covered till week four how about week five week five is all about shell variables whether you have grasped the concepts which we have mainly covered in this week four okay and each week introduces you to a new set of concepts which you need to use it with previous your knowledge right uh, the regular expressions comes in handy for a lot of stuff which we will see in the you know, upcoming lab apart from the networking thing we will try to have some more um what do you call activities planned around that uh, how do you felt the activities in the lab to where whether difficult or whether too easy or whether you know just consumed a lot of time 
consume a lot of time sir a lot of time did you guys uh, get to learn anything new while doing the activities okay sir crown tag like you know learning just through the theory and actually doing it what do you think you know is the difference it's a lot of difference uh you guys had a lot of synthetic while dealing with this doing the lab uh, too and the three days uh, what i have kept right on saturday i have really saturday sunday and monday three days i kept it open is that long enough time for you to do all the activities yes, most sir. of the activities yes. not all yes sir yes, long enough right because i believe that some of you may start in the evening uh, wow. saturday evening or maybe on sunday right so them i wanted to have them ample of time yeah prabhanjan uh just wanted to inform because we have exam also and the schedules uh, for working so i'm not able to find time to submit the lab to uh, report actually because already i have said in ppt and got a link that i have to put in what file in google uh so it could be okay to submit in the Prabhanjan, next one your uh... hello yeah yeah see if you have a genuine issue just hello Prabhanjan. Yes, am i sir. audible yes you are audible yeah 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 so in case you have any trouble as such you know where you have prior uh, what your commitments and everything yeah just add that into your report okay so, that becomes a summary for us even if you had that issue put yeah. it there and complete the task what i want all of you at the end of the day is to finish all of the task and if at all if you want to add something as your notes you can keep on adding to that Okay, i want okay. you to have more conversation with your ta's also so that they okay. also get up to date upon your improvement and also they can also get to learn something new from you as well right yes. on this part yeah okay so <clears throat> the intent of the lab and the reason why i want to have this hard deadline was if i don't have a deadline probably you will do it at the end of the term which i don't want Okay. Correct, correct. Which is yes. why I have a hard deadline so that you get to do the concepts in time, so that yeah. you have ample of time to absorb the next concepts. Okay. Yes, yes, true. Okay. Understood. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Dhruv. Uh, sir, I am from Lab Six. So when will we get our PA? Because we are not having. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We already interviewed one. Uh, you know, a couple of candidates. We will be finalizing them today or tomorrow. Okay, so okay. in any case, even if you want to tag us, right? Either you can tag uh, either of us, me or uh, Krishnan, or you can even tag the uh, course TAs, right? Like uh, uh, Sharath and Sayan. Okay? okay, and whatever it is, the query you have, right? We'll get it resolved. Okay, we I have already asked the other TAs to assess the lab six reports. Yeah, Mr. Krishnan. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, uh, we have that Chrome tab, uh, right, sir? Hmm. Uh, sir. Yes, sir. So, how to run sleep command in that? So, uh, because when, I when would I have to leave. It. Sorry for cutting short, sir. So, hmm. I would have to leave now. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank Go you. Ahead. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Have a good day. Yeah, good day. Uh, yes, sir. So, when I run, uh, run touch command, it worked fine. Hmm. Mm. Uh, but when i am running sleep command the same way it's not working mm. so it is always better to run it as a script okay say you want mm. to run script command or you want to run a touch command right run it into a script and run mm. that script with cron tab okay that is a uh, better way of dealing with the cron tab never run commands using cron uh, tab it's not a good practice oh, okay so we have to run a uh, file I mean, actually, yeah, through some... through a script file. So whatever you want to put commands, right? Just put it in the script and run that. Ah, yes, sir. At a particular time. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, Prakar. Uh, sir, after editing the lab report, do we have to left it like that only, or we have to share it uh, share it with anyone? Nothing. You just need to do it as is because uh, the lab reports are already shared with all other TAs and us. Okay, it okay. gets updated in real time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then uh, any other questions yeah. you guys have? How yes, do we Rajiv? know whether the, the, our uh, uh, reports are evaluated or? Uh, so the TAs will be commenting if there is an issue with the report, or they will also be commenting if they want you to improve on your uh, uh, reporting style. Okay. 
okay. so you will get right. informed uh, based on that we will have assessment um, you know meetings regularly uh, apart from this so we know okay. that uh, okay. the reports are coming and you right. can even tag the ta asking them questions in the reports yeah pravanya uh, so last question in the quiz one uh, i i understand that a lot of uh, things uh, i mean the command line and a lot of like uh, dash v and this all thing keeping remembering everything i mean we are finding difficult actually it is tough and yeah. knowing all of the syntax is even more difficult but wherever it is required we'll put a help text there okay 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 so, so there is not memory kind of... based hmm. okay okay understood and that will be great help for us thank you yeah, yeah. it is mostly logical in nature if you know the command if i have used it you will know yeah. the and why the help is provided there sure sure thank you yeah okay any more questions so, uh, sir yeah, just yeah. Uh, one i had one query mm -hmm. uh, just like we have the access to a scientific calculator for our electronics courses uh, mm -hmm. in the near future will we have something like uh, a restricted access terminal or something like that in the exam no 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 whatever you are able to get it right right now the virtual machine which you are having right for the course it will be based on the similar uh, one so okay sir. there uh, won't yeah. be restriction as such you know which will hinder your way of solving question that will not be the case Uh, so uh, for the quiz uh, i mean i wanted to ask for the quiz uh, the calculator just like the calculator so there will be no terminal access i mean no terminal access not for quiz, quiz one, is, yeah uh, quiz is only uh, regarding the questions right, right. it is not testing your uh, coding theoretical ability. questions yeah. so uh, yeah i guess uh, for such questions we have opps and npps yes opps are the apt way to test whether you understood a concept and you are able to code or not and npp is is for you to practice basically the same thing what you are doing uh, with the uh, solve yeah, uh, i mean yeah. i had to yeah i had to ask because uh, this week's uh, graded 5 uh, i couldn't do it without uh, doing it in the terminal first so i had to mm -hmm. uh, practice it for myself and only then get the answer mm -hmm. yeah i hope the questions are not very difficult in the portal if they are let us know uh, yes sir uh, there are some corrections also very very difficult uh but i mean it it uh, you know it it is a useful way to learn new concepts yeah but it's not difficult it's uh, the concepts are good okay then with that i think i will conclude the session today okay uh, we'll meet again on day after tomorrow right we have friday yeah krishnan uh, yes sir so sir we will receive marks right yeah 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 Uh, so i have already asked them to release the mock test maybe uh, tomorrow or on friday it will get released okay yes sir okay have a good day bye thank you sir. thank you sir have a good, good day thank you very much